Anybody ready to go down a rabbit hole? Okay, here we go. Strap on that hat, ladies and gentlemen, and grab the hand of the person next to you because we're about to enter the twilight zone. <laughs> there is a organization called CERN, and CERN is an acronym, and it is located in, it's so large, in CERN, Switzerland, which is right at around Geneva, okay? And, uh, and what I want to point out to you, I want to explain to you, is that CERN, and it was started, man, I forgot my notes here, but I think it was back in 1954, I believe, September 29th, 1954, amazingly, on the Feast of Trumpets. I'm sure that that was a coincidence as well. And it was also started by 12 countries. And so you have 12 countries on Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the Hebrew calendar, the biblical calendar, I, be, I believe, in a way, if it means anything, prophetically, of, of, of symbolizing Israel, the anti-Israel. Because what you have to learn about CERN Switzerland, what's in CERN Switzerland, is this company called CERN. And what they have is the largest hadron collider in the world. What's a hadron collider? What you're looking at right here is a 17-mile radius. Here's some pictures of a hadron collider that takes proton particles and puts them at this almost the speed of light 99.99999 percent of the speed of light which is 286,400 miles per second and it puts them in circles going around each other and then through giant magnets which are hundred thousand times stronger than the gravitational pull of the earth they force these particles to collide. What they're trying to do, you can see a picture of it there. Look, does that not look out something out of Star Trek? 10,000 connections just in that picture right there. 300 feet below ground. And this is where these beams of light will collide. What are they trying to do? They are trying to collide these beams and find what's called the God particle. They want, to be, they want to find the beginning of the universe. They want to replicate the Big Bang theory, and uh, the, the Big Bang, excuse me, and collide these and find out what comes off of them. Because what you have is you have matter, that's what you see right now, then you have antimatter, which is what you can't see, and you have dark matter. And what they're trying to discover is what's holding together matter that they can't see. Now, our Bible says is what? It's the Word. There's a spiritual dimension to the physical dimension, and that's what's holding everything together. What they want to do is find and separate that. So they want to separate the natural from the, what we call the supernatural, which is simply just the natural of something super. They want to separate that and they want to isolate that. Here's the problem with that. When you separate the natural from the, uh, and here's another picture of it, when you separate the natural from the supernatural, you don't know what you're going to find. Because the way that, that Scripture dis defines matter and antimatter is that you have matter that is connected to positive spiritual energy, from God, and then you have matter that is connected to negative energy, that's the demonic realm. And within every human being out there, including objects, the occult does this quite well, is that they can attach demonic spirits or negative energy to specific objects. And you say, well, I, I, well that's supernatural. How many remember Peter and the rag? prayed over the rag, or actually they, uh, they took a, a rags from Peter and Apostle Paul, and just, just the clothing that he's wearing is so anointed and connected to positive energy from Yahweh that when people touched it, they were healed. In the same way, the occult will, will take uh, a voodoo dolls or put curses on objects, and they're literally placing demonic energy and attaching the natural with the supernatural for whatever intended result that they have. Well, I'm pretty sure that their intentions are not Holy Spirit driven. So whatever they collide 
and they separate, it's probably not going to be a positive experience. So you say, oh, Jim, you're, you're, you're reading into this. By the way, these are people that invented the World Wide Web. They invented it. And you can look it up on Wikipedia. They invented it for, uh, for universities and for their own laboratories to be able to connect uh, uh, documents and information very quickly all on one server. It was basically kind of like an intranet for all of these computers around the world to be able to share information simultaneously. Out of that came what we call the internet. This is the kind of people that we're dealing with, very, very technologically advanced. A large portion of CERN is located in the territory of St. Genus Poli. In Roman times, it was called Apollyacum. The town and the temple were dedicated to Apollyon, the destroyer, Shiva, or Horus. The very city that, that CERN is sitting on is the ancient temple to the god Apollyon which is today in the Hindu temples, Shiva, which is the goddess of destruction and recreation. Destruction of what? It's the only goddess, catch this, out of the thousands of gods that are out there, it is the only one, the only deity that claims to destroy the universe for the purpose of recreating it. It's it. So would it shock you to discover Whoops, let's read this out of Revelation. To him who was given the key of the bottomless pit, he opened the bottomless pit, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. The bottomless pit is connected, according to our Bible, to the god Apollyon, which is Hasatan himself. And the very temple of Apollyon is sitting right dead center in CERN. Here's CERN's logo. Now I'm going to stretch this just for a little bit, but if you look at this, you will see 666. As a matter of fact, I looked at this for a long time, like, oh, wait a minute, there's more than. Then, then three sixes, and, and then I discover, no, there's not. There's only three actual sixes, and there's two nines. I don't know what that means, but maybe it's a coincidence. I don't know about you, but if I'm creating a logo, I really don't want it to resemble 666. But they did. So this is the epicenter or the, the, the facility, the main headquarters of CERN right here. That's their logo right there. And outside of their main headquarters, this is amazing to me. It is the only corporation in the world that has a deity as its mascot. Because corporations don't like to be connected to religion. They just don't. But this is the largest of its kind and the deity that is found outside of its headquarters is Shiva. Ancient Apollyon, the goddess of destruction. And if you look very careful, this is thousands of years old. If you look carefully, what does that look like? It looks like the exact picture of the stargate that they're creating 300 foot below ground of the collider. In their own videos, they use it. Just so you th might think that I'm not uh, crazy here, the Director of Research in Scientific Computing at CERN has this to say about the colliding. Something may come through dimensional doors at LHC, and out of this door might come something, or we might send something through it. Why is that so important? Because you have to understand, you can read all of this on their website, the purpose of CERN for the last 60 years has been to open up a portal of time space. They want to open up a black hole, what's called a miniature black hole, because when you collide these two, theoretically, it will tear open the time-space continuum for as little as three seconds, as much as 26 seconds. That was six years ago that they 
uh, determine this, and it will create what's called a miniature black hole. Something will come through. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know if a black hole is a good idea. <laughs> Every movie that I've watched that has a black hole, something goes in and never comes back. Black holes are like giant uh, vacuum cleaners. The smallest one can suck the entire earth into it, just like that. It's something that we can't understand. It's not in our normal computing brain power to wrap our brain around a small microscopic wormhole that could suck our universe into it, everything that's around it. But that's how it works. This is what they're trying to do. Ultimately, the goal of CERN, you can read it on their own website, their goal is time travel. That's what they want to do. Every movie that you've ever watched is not science fiction. It's there for a reason. Go back and watch it. You'll see that all of the time travel from 25 years ago to cartoon movies are using the very Hadron Collider symbol as their stargate. Coincidence? I don't know. All I know is that it's very interesting that how many didn't even know of CERN, never even heard of it before? That we have, can you imagine that? We are living in a day where we don't even know that this organization exists and their main goal is to open up a black hole of which they admit from the head director of research and scientific development, they don't know what could come from the other side. I don't know about you, but Revelation says if it's connected, there is something on the other side, and it's called a polyon. And our Bible says that at the end of time that the Nephilim or, the, or these demonic beings are going to come out of the bottomless pit. Can I just suggest possibly, is it possible that we are the ones responsible at holding the key? Could it be that we actually do it to ourselves? That knowledge increases to such a level that we figure out how to get the key to the bottomless pit and open it, but we don't know what we're doing because the enemy, the evil spirits that are running this, this race, which are the spirits of the Nephilim or the giants, they are working on behalf of the fallen angels which are in a bottomless pit right now. And they're manipulating the minds of man, giving them all of this technology to open up the key for their buddies. Just a thought. Y'all are going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> when is their next collision scheduled for? Would it shock you? <laughs> September 2015. They will be ramping up the largest Hadron Collider project in the history of the Collider. It's already started. It takes months to ramp up because there's so many circles they have to go to, magnets to ramp up the speed to light speed. And it's going to hit its apex in the end of September this year. They're going to hit a collision. 